Hey guys, me Seren, back with another video. We are on day 20 of Hidden Figures. There's only eight hidden figures left. There's only eight days left in the month. Can you guys believe it? We've done 20 days of videos. So today's hidden figure is Mary Seacole, uh, someone that was actually suggested on my Zelda when Valda's video. I was like, oh, Mary Seacole, I've never heard of her. Let's hear a little bit more about her. So Mary Seacole was a Jamaican-born nurse who helped soldiers during the Crimean Crimean War? Crimean Crimean War? Did I say that right? Mary Seacole was a Jamaican-born nurse who helped soldiers during the Crimean War. Her work was praised at the time, but she became even more famous a century later. She was born Mary Jane Grant in Kingston, Jamaica in 1805 to a Scottish soldier father and a Jamaican mother. Mary learned her nursing skills from her mother, who kept a boarding house for invalid soldiers. Although technically free, being of mixed race, Mary and her family had few civil rights. They could not vote, hold public office, or enter many professions. In 1836, Mary married Edwin Seacole, but the marriage was short-lived as he died in 1844. Seacole was an inveterate traveler and before her marriage visited other parts of the Caribbean, including Cuba, Haiti, and the Bahamas, as well as Central America and Britain. On these trips, she complemented her knowledge of traditional Jamaican medicine with European medical ideas. In 1854, Seacold traveled to England again and approached the war office, asking to be sent as an army nurse to the Crimea where there was known to be poor medical facilities for wounded soldiers, and she was refused. Undaunted, Seacold funded her own trip to the Crimea where she established the British Hotel near Baklava to provide a mess table and comfortable quarters for sick and convalescent officers. Those are her words. She also visited the battlefield sometimes under fire, to nurse the wounded and became known as Mother Seacole. Her reputation rivaled that of the very famous nurse, Florence Nightingale. After the war, she returned to England destitute and in ill health. The press highlighted her plight and in July 1857, a benefit festival was organized to raise money for her, attracting thousands of people. Later that year, Seacole published her memoirs, The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands. She died on May 14, 1881. Let's get a little bit more in depth. Mary Seacole was a Jamaican-born nurse who helped soldiers during the Crimean War. Her work was praised at the time, but she became even more famous a century later. She was born Mary Grant in Kingston, Jamaica, daughter of a Scottish soldier and the owner of a boarding house for officers and their families. Seacole had a good education and developed an interest in medicine and nursing from her mother, who was a traditional healer. In 1836, she married Edwin Horatio Seacole, a neighbor a naval officer who died in 1844, shortly before Mary's mother also died. Mary remained in Kingston, but spent a lot of time nursing in Panama, where a cholera epidemic was raging. At the start of the Crimean War in 1853, she went to London to offer her services, but her application to join Florence Nightingale's nursing team was refused. Many nurses were turned down because of their class background, or in this case, ethnicity. So they turned her down because she was black. Instead of giving up, Mary Seacole sailed to the Crimea at her own expense, and she and Thomas Day, a relative in the shipping business, opened the British Hotel near Baklava a few months later in 1855. The roughly built hotel was also an officer's club and had a popular canteen serving good food. Using it as a base, she would take mules laden with food, wine, and medicines across the country to battlefront. She obtained special passes which allowed her to look after the wounded and dying on both sides. Wow, so she looked after the soldiers on both sides of the conflict. When she arrived back in London in 1856, Seacole was bankrupt from debts run up by soldiers at the British Hotel. The newspaper started a public campaign to raise money for her, backed by royalty and a grateful British army, and in 1857, her biography became a bestseller. The Seacole Fund eventually established her to live in comfort in Paddington, London, then until her death in 1881. She was posthumously awarded the Jamaican Order of Merit in 1991, and in 2004, she was voted the greatest Black Briton. Wow. It's really interesting that she applied 
She acquired knowledge of herbal medicine in the Caribbean. When the Crimean War broke out, she applied to the war office to assist but was refused. She, she applied but was refused because she's black. So she took her own money on her own dime and went to go help soldiers on both sides, which ended up leaving her destitute. Like that's like a real dedication to the human condition, right? And a dedication to helping people. She traveled independently and set up her hotel and assisted battlefield wounded. She became extremely popular among service personnel who raised money for her when she faced destitution after the war. They erected a statue of her at St. Thomas Hospital, London on June 30th, 2016 and described her as a pioneer nurse, a pioneer nurse. Right, and that generated a controversy from the fans of fucking Florence Nightingale, who's like a super famous white nurse that we all know because they were like, Mary Seacole was not a real nurse. She wasn't a real nurse. She was practicing that Jamaican voodoo medicine and she didn't have a, a medical degree. So I don't think it's appropriate that she should be honored as a nurse. Like here is someone that was like literally like so dedicated to the human condition and to helping people on both sides that she traveled on her own dime after being turned down by the war office because she was black to assist soldiers. And you still to this day have these white people that are mad about it because she doesn't like meet up to this like Eurocentric standard of medicine, of healing, you know, the, because she was using these Jamaican herbal, you know, medicinal practices along with like the European, the Western medicine that she picked up. And that like made people mad. Like that's really, really, really interesting. This, this sounds like a really amazing person. And it's good to hear that a hundred years later, she actually got her just due and was voted, you know, greatest black Britain and received the Jamaican order of merit and that we even know her name and know her story because that's pretty amazing. And yet again, people are still mad about it. I really like that she used her, her knowledge in Jamaican medicine as well. I would love to, to learn more about that. I might pick up her autobiography. Um, and she does have some really interesting quotes. Um, I have a few shades of deeper brown upon my skin, which shows me related to those poor mortals you once held enslaved and whose bodies America still owns. Having this bond and knowing what slavery is, having seen with my eyes and heard with my ears proof positive enough of its horrors, is it surprising that I should be somewhat impatient of the airs of superiority which many Americans have endeavored to assume over me? And I also wanted to read one more quote, which was when she was um, destitute. She said, I trust that England will not forget one who nursed her sick, who sought out her wounded to aid and succor them, and who performed the last offices for some of her illustrious dead. I love that she said that, too, because that just also ties into these ideas that people go off and they fight in these wars and they do all these things for their country and then once the war is done and they come back, they're forgotten and nobody cares about them, nobody gives a fuck about them. You know, huge amounts of veterans have mental illness, they have PTSD and they're homeless and they're living on the streets and, you know, this under this, especially here in the United States, under this warped idea of, you know, of patriotism, you know, this woman went on her own dime to go help people and then came back and was destitute, you know? Luckily for her, people raised, you know, they kind of galvanized around her and raised money for her to live comfortably until the end of her life. But, you know, that's a real problem in societies, the way that we just like use people up and then throw them away, right? Mary Seacole, how fascinating. Thank you so much for suggesting her. Again, I, I've really been enjoying doing this series just because I feel like even for me personally, I'm just learning so much about these exceptional, exceptional, exceptional black women, you know, many of whom that I had never heard of before. So shout out to all of you guys for suggesting such amazing women. Y'all, y'all have the range. Y'all have the range. You know all about some incredible women. So Moving forward with, hit, with Hidden Figures, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad. There's only eight days left. I'm definitely going to continue the series. I'm not going to be doing it daily because doing daily vlogs is intense. But, you know, I, I am going to kind of miss doing daily videos on this. But I'm going to certainly keep up the series because I'm really, really enjoying learning about these women. So, Mary Seacole, A Hidden Figure. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.